I guess I have a question based off the structure comment. <clears throat> sure. So I have a client who seems to sit like Annie Verde, right? Has a bunch of internal rotation, mm -hmm. um, not a lot of external rotation. Okay. Pretty even side to side. Um, but he starts to get like a right hamstring pull when he's running. So like, is he shifted? But everything seems to be pretty status quo, right to left. Um, you know, he's flat back, right, wide, and for center angle. So okay. from the front, he looks wide. But what do you start to look at there? Do you, you know, he's is he posterior pelvic tilted already because he's antiverted? Is there already that pelvic tilt or what? <laughs> okay. So people with crazy internal rotation of the hip, yeah. limited external rotation of the hip, tend to have a problem above the pelvis that is okay. orienting the pelvis forward. So let me let me show you with my little pelvis here. Okay. So if if I just if I just orient the pelvis forward, so I'm not I'm not altering the relationship between the ilium and the sacrum at all. So I'm just going to orient it forward. So so that would mean that the infrapubic angle is, is still wide, right? And so if they have any respiratory uh, uh, variability issues where, they, where they, they don't have the ability to adduct the hip or whatever, then chances are the whole pelvis is oriented forward. So what happens when I, when I orient the pelvis forward is I actually gain a lot of hip internal rotation. So the normal mechanics of the hip as the ilium rotates forward is to increase internal rotation, um, adduction, and of course, flexion of the hip. Okay, that would be that would be a normal pattern associated with that movement of the of the pelvis. So what can happen is is I gain that internal rotation, um, and then because of the anterior orientation of the of the pelvis, the, there's muscles on the on the front half of the pelvis that can internally rotate the hip. Well, they pick up concentric orientation. So I lose the ability to externally rotate and I have this crazy okay. internal rotation. So I would look up here and above. So you mentioned a flat back. So if yeah. somebody's, if, yeah. So if somebody's got a wide infrasternal angle, the axial skeleton tends to be in an exhaled position and the wide infrasternal angle is a compensatory strategy to breathe in. And again, that, that will present as a structural thing because most people, like, if you look at like a shorter torso to longer leg length concept, those people tend to be a little bit wider. And then there's, and there's other relationships. But again, yeah. with, with, with the wide ISA and the flat back, you've got an exhaled axial skeleton. So, so what I would do, um, one is you got to start thinking about, I've got a lot of concentric muscle activity above the pelvis. So when you try to reorient the position of the axial skeleton, um, I would try to reverse the pelvis and start to expand that, that upper back area. So, the, so the, the posterior upper thorax, getting um, expansion there. Um, again, so your reaching activities, your overhead activities, um, using an inhalation um, will, um, that was my dog, by the way, um, will provide you uh, uh, the whole reorientation of the pelvis, and then you recheck your your hips and see if you don't if you don't start to see the difference. So okay. you, you're just picking up. Con it sounds like you're picking up concentric um, activity on the on the front half of the pelvis. Now. Okay. Yeah. It's really confounding because you don't expect to see any internal rotation on those wide wide infrasternal angles, and when you do see it, it's it's usually higher. It's not in the okay. pelvis itself. Yeah. It's a good question because it happens a lot and people get confused because it doesn't really fit, you know, what you would typically yeah. see. Yeah, I was a little thrown off by it. So. Yeah, yeah. Go upstairs. That's what I would do.